How's it going, Tan Little Hot Dog Cuties? Ben here, and today we are going to be talking about how exams in medical school are like. Because a lot of people don't really know how exams are like in medical school, and people have kind of ideas about how it is. But even me, someone who basically dedicated the last four years to trying to get into medical school, had no idea how exams were going to be like. I was told that it was going to be completely multiple choice, and that. And that actually perked me up because I hate it, guys. I hate it doing free response questions in undergrad. Any class that had free response questions, I, I did not like it at all because of the fact that a lot of the free response answers are subjective. So if a professor didn't like the way that you wrote your answer, even though you were trying to you knew what you were talking about even slight little idiosyncrasies in your wording can get you points taken off so i hated free response questions and so i was super excited that it was multiple choice but to be honest guys exams in medical school are super different and if you are curious whether or not you want to go into a medical school or you're just doing a random youtube search i'm here to tell you how they are like but before that i have a really 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 cool thing to share with you. This month is Black History Month and the binder company GC2B is having their Black History Month capsule collection. It's called In Full Bloom. All proceeds of the of the capsule collection line will go to the Trans Women of Color Collaborative. As you guys know, Trans Women of Color are one of the most, most marginalized groups in society right now in the United States. There's an incredibly incredibly high rate of violence against transgender women of color so these hoodies look awesome i'm gonna put a couple of images up here to let you guys see how they are so if you guys are interested in buying them feel free to go check them out i bought myself a hoodie it's the most expensive hoodie i've ever bought in my entire life and you know what since all proceeds are going to a good cause i don't i don't feel bad about buying it because i'm always i've always been kind of the anti paying more than you should for a product like i'm really big on getting the most bang for your buck that's why i have the camera that i'm buying that's why i have the lighting that i have and whenever i upgrade things i always upgrade for the intention of bettering my content bettering myself bettering my wardrobe i never do it just for bragging rights if that's if that's any anything so it was a super cool hoodie i'm super excited to get it if i get it in by next week guys i'll probably have a little um uh, little display video for you guys to see how much i like it um i'm very excited to have it in the mail but let's get down to business let's talk about the most important thing that we're going to be talking about probably the only thing we're going to be talking about today how exams in medical school are like now as far as exam frequency i'm going to leave that up to each medical school each medical school likes to um change their variance and how often they are testing their students so i'm not going to go way too into that like my friend is going to a school where she gets an exam every other week Thank God I'm not going to a school like that. My school has exams every three to four weeks. And that is the perfect sweet spot for me. Just having an exam every two weeks would just make my life super, super, super miserable. But so frequency is up for debate. It depends on the medical school, what they want out of their students, what they think is best for their students. Leave it to the medical schools. But here are how the exams are like. So remember how in the a couple of minutes ago I was telling you guys how like I heard that almost all questions in medical school are multiple choice? Well, the truth is they are. They are all multiple choice. And I I when I first heard it, I was like, "Yes, thank thank goodness. I don't ever have to see a free response question ever again." But boy, boy was I misled on what it means to have a multiple choice exam. So the classic undergrad high school level multiple choice questions are A, B, C, and D. Maybe in some undergrad courses, especially in the sciences, we like to go to an E option. Well, in medical school, <laughs> it's, it's a lot more than that. Sometimes, sometimes it goes from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. It can go up to P. Or even more. P is the is the longest I have seen so far. But I don't I don't I'm not gonna say the P is the longest it's ever gonna be because to be honest, 
you you just never know it can go up to z it could go <laughs> up to a b t a through z and then a through z again i have no idea but multiple choice questions even though it sounds very very easy they're out the questions there and the answer choices available to you are so much that you actually have to know the material so that you can get the answer right you can't just guess and hope that you are right guess and hope that you have a 20 to 25 percent chance of getting that question right almost all the questions are more than five answer choices so you better know your stuff when you are taking your exams which is good which is good which is what we want in our future physicians because we don't want people basically guessing their way through medical school and that's how they're passing because obviously they're not going to know what they need to know to treat patients so now let's talk about what the content the content of the questions are like are they single single sentence questions are they long paragraphs that you have to read kind of like a reading comprehension level questions or are they similar to how they are in undergrad well it's kind of a combination of all of them so the most common as far as my school goes the most common questions are two types though the single one sentence or one to three sentence question which is like tell me what adenylate cyclase does it's an enzyme blah 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 associated with g protein coupled receptor that increase increases a second messengers camp stuff like that those questions ge generally tend to be easier but they also tend to have more answer choices because since they are asking a pretty easy question they want to make sure you know exactly exactly what they are asking for but then there are another type of question called the clinical case the clinical case question and now I'm a first year clinical case questions get harder in second year but it's pretty simple for us right now we are given a scenario it's called a clinical vignette where let's say a 23 year old woman admits herself into the ER she has this this and this symptoms and her labs show this this and this what does she have or what enzyme is malfunctioning or what does she need so that's how the questions are and I'm, I'm gonna put some examples up on the top corner of how the questions are kind of worded but those questions although in the beginning I was super super intimidated by them I was like I have no idea I don't have no idea what to give her I have no idea what she has but um after a while I started to really enjoy them and a lot of my classmates enjoyed them a lot more than the rote memorization questions because a lot of hints are given in the paragraph on how to answer the question and two it's actually applying yourself to a clinical setting like this is exactly what we're going to be seeing at the hospitals at the clinics we're not going to be at our office and someone comes up to us and tells us what's the mechanism of a dinolet cyclase you know what I mean like those clinical vignettes are our preparation to become doctors so those questions are super super fun to do yes you do need to practice that's why in my last video I was like you gotta do practice problems if you have no idea how to approach a clinical vignette you're gonna be you're just gonna be completely and totally totally lost on what you need to do but if you know what you're doing if you've done your practice problems they're actually super fun and they allow you to implement what you've learned in class into actual real life scenarios and then throughout the exam every now and then we get a question where we're supposed to interpret some lab values interpret some graphs or look at a slide a microscopic slide and try to identify what we're looking at either an organ is it the pancreas is it the liver is it the kidney we're looking at microscopic slides so you have to look out at specific structures within within those organs to identify what they are or what parts of the organ they are and you may be thinking why does medical students have to know about how to read microscopic slides well believe it or not guys even in primary care settings and other specialties you may you may have to use a microscope pap smears are the number one reason in primary care settings where doctors will use a microscope to see the activity of your cells to see if your cervic cervical cells are not cancerous they're not neoplastic neoplastic is generally just a term to say that uh, you're making new cells and some of them may be 
may be cancers, may be benign, may be just proliferations of new cells. So that's why us knowing histology, knowing how to read culture slides are very important. And you may be thinking, you may be thinking that is so boring. That is so boring. But I'm, ki I'm not kidding you guys. Histology has been my favorite, favorite course of the entirety of first year. And it's so sad because we're going to finish our last histology lecture. No, we just finished it. We did it today. We did our last histology lecture of the year. And I'm actually pretty sad about it because I had so much fun looking at the slides, trying to identify it is. It's kind of like a Where's Waldo game, but with cells. Yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I also really enjoy our radiology questions. So they'll show like an x-ray or like a CT scan and we're supposed to interpret what organs they are. And when I first looked at those questions, I was like, I have no idea how to, that, that doesn't look like an aorta to me. That doesn't look like a heart to me. But the more more practice you do, the more you realize how fun it is to actually try and identify what is what. And again, it's like a Where's Waldo game. And like, if you guys are really good visual learners and you're thinking like, I don't know if medical school is for me, you might want to seriously consider going to medical school if, if you want to put the effort into all the other subjects. But if you really want to focus on imaging, you can do a specialty that's focus exactly on imaging and or looking at microscopic slides and it's super fun it's one of the reasons why I'm actually considering pathology now as a specialty although although there are people that are telling me that I'm more of a people person so I should do a specialty that interacts with more people which I agree with them so but I'm definitely considering it now because I enjoyed imaging and histology so, so much. And I, I love those questions. Those questions are super, super fun to do. It's like playing a game. It literally is like playing a game of I Spy. And finally, the last type of test and examination we have in medical school are the mini boards, which is very similar to our regular, regular test that we have, except the mini boards have a lot more clinical vignette type scenario question, so I'm not going to include that as the last type. Mini boards is very similar to the exams that we actually take, but the last type are the anatomy practicals, where we're actually in the lab, we're looking at the body donors that we have dissected, and we try to identify structures within the body donor. And this one, I kind of hated doing this one in the beginning because I was like, I don't know, that looks like that looks like the brachial artery, but it turns out to be the ulnar artery. So I I did not like them in the beginning, but that was because I wasn't spending enough time with different different bodies. And you really can't appreciate it until you're actually in an anatomy lab. But every body, every human body is different. We're all I know like a lot of the people a lot of times we're like we're all the same on the inside yes in general in general we are but people have variation so one of our donors had four ureters that's crazy because most people have two some of our donors didn't ha doesn't have a kidney they have one kidney and every donor is a little bit different and you learn to really appreciate if you spend more time in anatomy lab you learn to really really appreciate the variations within our bodies and just human bodies in general, like how how we function, the things inside of us that make us able to move our hands, move our fingers, talk with our mouths, love on another person, to spread love to other people. And it's, I, I learned to really appreciate it after the first exam because instead of just focusing on my specific body, I started looking at the other bodies. And then I started realizing that's what the professors were trying to get me to understand. They were trying to get me to appreciate the different variations within human bodies that there are during the practicals. And you really need to expose yourself to the different bodies to be able to appreciate that. And I'm incredibly grateful for the donors who donated their bodies to science for us to do that. And I may make a video about how my experience has been in an anatomy lab, but it's, it's in the beginning, it's a little frustrating because I just didn't know how to tackle questions like that. 
but once I got myself rolling, I was able to be like, ooh, that's the ureter, or ooh, and on and on and on and on. Like, you just really learn to appreciate it. And that's about it for this week's video. I go. I hope you guys liked it, even though if you're not into medical school, I hope this was a little bit informative for you so you could tell your friends about how exams in medical school are like so you can educate them on how how interesting medical school can be I personally like I'm not a lawyer but I love to see how law school is like look at law law school or youtubers law school or blogs and stuff like that I'm always open to learning about new professions even hairstylists I'm always intrigued about beauty school so if you're one of those people who have no plans on going into medical school and just wanted to know how exams are like in medical school Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stick around because I make a lot of different videos on a lot of different topics, not just not just medical school. I like talking about a lot of different things. Be sure to be follow me on my social media accounts, Instagram and Twitter. I think I put I put my little handles up in the beginning of the video. And if you like this video, please like it. If you like me, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. This has been Have a good one, guys. Have a good one.